Good evening and welcome to Wednesday Night Life here at Northern Hills United Methodist Church. My name is Herschel Krigbaum and I am a lay servant here at the church. And it's always a great opportunity that God gives us where we can gather in His name to uh, char recharge our spiritual batteries on uh, this Wednesday evening. Tonight we have the pleasure of uh, Mickey McCandless who's going to deliver the message. And the title of his message is, Did the Resurrection Really Occur? Remember, we want to hear your prayer requests and your praise reports here at the church. If you have a prayer request and you f feel comfortable where you are, you can say that out loud. If you have a praise report and you feel comfortable, you can say that out loud. Uh, remember to send those to prayer at nhumc.org. If you had a praise report, Lord, we give you praise. Praise God. If you had a prayer request, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day and time. We thank you for Mickey, uh, who's stepped up to the plate to deliver your message on this evening. Father God, may your Holy Spirit be with him. We thank you for this time, and we love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening. I'm going to reflect on the question, did the resurrection really occur this evening? So a reading from the Gospel of Luke in the 12th, 24th chapter, the first 12 verses. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they came in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to, 11, to the eleven and all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdala, Johanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. So many of us may read mystery short stories or novels that invite us into the story. Books written by Agatha Christie, Arthur Conan Doyle, P.D. James, Sue Grafton, and many others. As we read and listen to these stories, we're invited into the mystery that surrounds that story. And we're invited to wrestle with trying to understand that mystery, which eventually the writer opens up for us so that the mystery becomes explainable and solved. In the end, the hiddenness of the mystery in the Bible is not as easily explained. We're able to read the Bible, but yet the mystery of living the fullness of life that God dreams for us is still in many ways, mysterious. So how do we offer an explanation for that? What are some of the mysteries that happen in our lives? How is it that I met and married the significant person in my life? Some of that is explainable, but much of that is unexplainable. I can point towards some things that have helped that relationship be powerful and be uh, sustaining for me, but there's so much that's not explainable. It still remains a mystery. How is it that people can be married 50 years and other folks struggle with sustaining relationships? Another mystery. How is it that 
Sometimes I make good decisions and sometimes I make poor decisions. And it's not about the amount of information that I take in because I try to take in the same amount of information all the time. Yet that mystery remains on how do I come to make good decisions? Through all that decision making, through all those relationships, through life, God remains present, though mysterious. The things that happen to me are somewhat explainable, but in many ways remain a mystery. God's presence is here for me, and I believe that. God's presence is here for you, and I believe that. Yet, how does that happen? The mystery in life is that God is always present. Sometimes God reveals God's self, and sometimes God does not. Yet God is always present. That's a faith statement in truth. And God is always working with us, which is also another faith statement. And that is the Bible. The Bible is the work of people inspired by God to ground us in what it means to have a relationship with God and with other people and with the whole world around us and do that in a way that sustains us, that grows us, that inspires and brings to life the world in the uniqueness that God dreams for people and for creation. As I've experienced the hills and valleys of life, I've seen God in both of those. I've seen God working in my life in both of those, and I've seen God work in other people's lives in both of those. And through it all, I've seen the work of resurrection, which happens in other people's lives and has happened in mine. Did the resurrection happen? From a scientific, provable standpoint, I'm not sure I can say yes to that question. From a faith statement, I certainly can say the resurrection happened and it continues to happen in the midst of my life, in the midst of lives around us. God is at work creating life so that all of us can live to the dream God dreams for us, and that is resurrection. The early disciples, the women who went and had to be reminded of Jesus telling them of what would happen to them, allowed them to then go back to the disciples and say, this has happened. That which he said, he will be risen, has happened. The disciples didn't believe that to begin with. It took them time to both encounter Jesus and to come to that belief themselves. That's your and my opportunity to encounter Jesus, resurrected, risen, life given to us, and leading us that we might continue to be the people that God dreams for us. Did the resurrection happen? Yes, the resurrection happened. But you must decide what that means for you. We have stories that point to what that means for God, but how does that go to work in your life? It continues to grow me and grow my life and grow my walk and journey with God. Over the next days, months, and years of your life, continue to look for God. Continue to watch as God walks with you. And as God pours God's resurrection power into the midst of your life and continue to be fully alive in a way God dreams for you because of the power of the resurrection. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Thank you, Mickey, for an excellent message. Remember uh, to check out all of our social media outlets, which is Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. There's a lot of information on those sites. Also check out our uh, church website, which is nhumc.org, and you'll find out everything that's going on through the summer months. Please join me for this benediction. May the grace and the peace and the love of God be with you. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, everybody. See you next week.